Greetings, YouTube. Welcome back to the channel as I claim my free crystal. You know, I am uh, recording this and waiting to record this after I have achieved every free unit milestone. Now, obviously, once you get past the max milestone, you will get higher uh, placement rewards. You will uh, really... The only thing that matters in, these, in this case for people is the six star. Uh, the rank rewards, of course, do determine the six star. But now that we have early access bundles in the game, and you have a hundred bucks, we have more people than ever who are valiant. And on top of that, it's the first time I believe we have seen the valiant crystals in these—the five to sevens instead of the four to sevens that were paragons. Um, wow, and six greater champion boosts instead of three is also just, that's a ton. What's more valuable, six greater champion boosts that you can use for an hour straight and clear content and do good work, or two crystals that are probably gonna be, in my case, two seven stars. Well, after Omega Days, and by, by I said my case, not two seven stars, more like two five stars. I wish it was two seven stars. Uh, in my case, we have this hunger after Omega Days to build back up unit stashes. now. 50,000 units. I opened a ton of arena crystals if you missed that video to get back there. I am blessed to be able to do the arena multiple times uh, a week, really most of the time, multiple hours a day. And now that I am off teaching, I can relax for the summer and do more gameplay. But most people can't do that. They've got kids, they've got spouses, they've got full time jobs. They can barely log in and move an Alliance quest. And so now that they have spent all the units that they have for Omega Days, they're looking to not swipe the credit card they're tapped out or maybe they want to spend it on say today's early access bundle so that leaves us wanting to maximize the time in the arena while minimizing actually having to be in it the problem is kabam knows this my mastery loadout one is my arena setup this is the full recoil masteries i got glass cannon maxed out i've got liquid courage maxed out i've got double edge maxed out um Defense is enough for willpower, and that's it. That's always my defense. And then proficiencies are pretty weak compared to other decks as well. So uh, the PI for my champions in the arena, and right now we're going to focus on uh, the six-star basic and the six-star featured for this video. My seven stars peak at 39,000, and their lowest PI, and keep in mind this is indeed unboosted, just with the mastery setup, is 18,000. Six stars in terms of the ones that I actively use start at 38,000, almost the same PI as my seven stars. And then once I get down to Blade, which is the low 22s, uh, I, so I stop and wait for the timers to refresh. But here's the thing that's always been troubling with the arena. Rounds really five through 15 are the hardest. And then after 15, you still need to keep your champs uh, PI up when that you bring in or else you're going to trigger death matches. Now, death matches look a lot different in 2024 than they did even at the end of 2023. And what I've done with the help of some friends, including my man Ben Koala, who's been doing his own arena research personally just for himself, is I want to talk about what a death match looks like now and why it's a problem. So I have three 565 six stars that I brought into the arena this past week. I was hoping for the Thanos team, but of course I triggered this team. Now, you usually get one easy champion out of the three that you should fight. Yeah, the PI is not ideal. It's pretty even. But Aegon, unless you make a mistake and have his furies and specials counter you, Aegon should be a win every time and a fairly relaxing win at that. But Bullseye, when you don't have a Bullseye counter, and Maestro are long fights. I'm not saying they're impossible fights. I'm not even saying they're necessarily hard fights. They're just long fights. And the arena is already long for your soul. It's long for your brain. It's long for your spiritual health. And so every time you get matched up with a Bullseye-Maestro combo, you're going to have a, long, a longer time in the arena to not have to be worth it. I know people who just care about moving on. So if they beat Bullseye with Nimgod... They won't even fight Maestro. They'll just move on to the next match and they'll forfeit those points. So I'm not saying you should do that, but sometimes 
a cost bit of an analysis would say that it's actually going to save you time to move on to the next fight versus do a very long fight. If you're looking at different examples of this, we have many. Again, Koala Ben, this is rounds 9 through 10. I would not recommend doing this. He's going to see this every time. And he's still going to see those same defenders if he brings in his rank 3 and rank 2 7 stars, but he's going to have obviously much better uh, champs. He's also better at this game than I ever will be, and uh, I still don't have Deathless King Group because I'm one piece missing because I couldn't clear with my skills and resources and patience the Alliance War Showcase. It was way worse than Necropolis for me. And uh, in the spirit of that, you want the best counters. Domino, Awakened, Rank 3, RNG, Good Luck Kindred. Joe Fixit's going to be easy in terms of getting him down, but you're still going a Rank 1, 7 star versus Awakened Rank 3, so the health and attack are very different. And then Deathless King Groot with Killmonger. That and the Domino one. I mean, if you don't fight well against John R. Bravo, I hope he wanted to be John E. Bravo. It was just taken, so he became John R. Bravo. That's just a little fan fiction I'm writing in for this video. Uh, those two are going to be tough. And you could easily lose this. And this is a guy who's a valiant player that's, I think, one of the best players in the game that I've seen. He would probably be too humble to admit that, but I will. A Valiant player with a seeming unlimited deck is facing these matchups in the 6-star basic and 6-star featured arena. This video is not for Koala Ben. He will be just fine. He will be annoyed by long fights and he will get through them. But what about the people who are uncollected that, that try this? Who are Cavalier, who are Thronebreaker, Paragon, and there are several... Not all Valiants are created equal. There are several new Valiant players that still don't have the deep roster to compete with this. You're going to lose this fight. And you're going to go back to zero. And then you're going to have to restart your infinite streak. And that is a kiss of death for a lot of people. They just don't want to put in the work, so they wait until it resets or they don't do arena altogether. And that's Kabam's goal. Kabam's goal is to get you so frustrated with death matches and just the routine um, boredom of the arena that you quit. Because when you quit, you don't get those juicy free units. You don't get more ISO and gold when you open the pathetic crystals that are still in those milestones. Um, they win. Kabam wins when you give up in the arena. And more people are giving up than ever before because more people have reasons to give up than ever before. How about this? This is me today. I won comfortably two out of three of these, but then when I fought Onslaught, 24,000 on Awakened Rank 2 with Omega Sentinel. Okay, well I should say, this fight was my best Onslaught fight. I won all three of these. I'll show one here in a second that I got destroyed and I don't know how I could have helped it. And this is rank five, uh, six stars. All three of these are ascended. They're really rank six. How many people that jump into the arena have three rank six, six stars to throw in to death matches? And how many of those are Negasonic Teenage Warhead, who's the bullseye counter? Almost none. You better believe I was very excited to see that counter pop up. How about this? This is another one. Again, it's not impossible, it's just annoying. And the more annoying, the more draining, and the more draining, the less likely you are to continue. Warlock, Gladiator, Omega Red, all awakened rank 3. Omega Days has influenced the amount of rank 3 uh, rosters. We've already covered that this week for Battlegrounds. And I got through it, but it was long. This is the fight I was thinking of. Nebula against Onslaught. I s those neuro... Uh, shocks that Nebula can't absorb, like, Onslaught makes Nebula look like a useless champ when she should be, like, Nebula should be able to absorb all kinds of shock. I think that is a huge issue, and I know they wanted to create a mutant that kind of reset the expectations of what Nim God could counter, because he was probably too OP, to be honest, but now you're making champs with a class advantage feel like they have a class disadvantage. This is what you want to see eventually. When people say, Prof, you want a Kang's team or a Thanos' team. You want those rank three, seven stars to trigger not just low ranking defenders, but three of the easiest unawakened rank five defenders you will ever see. This will happen though. You'll get a little annoyed by this. And then Koala then sent me this. Now again, these are his rank one, seven stars. I would not use those until you've gotten past a win streak of 15, really hopefully a win streak of more like 25. And even then, this could still happen, but this will definitely happen where he was, building up his his streak. Uh, Sasquatch, America Chavez, and Domino, all three 
very pesky defenders. I'm not saying he can't win, but it will be um, long, and it will be stressful, and it will be annoying. Speaking of which, this is his Kindred fight he recorded for this video, and so I'm hiding my webcam. Again, this is not a fight that he should lose more than maybe 20% of the time, but look at how little damage he's doing, and uh, he's bolder than me. I've learned not to dex her, because then, look, dex failed. I know she was lucky, literally. But uh, I just don't even want to get in the habit of doing it because sometimes I won't check if she's lucky or unlucky and I'll set myself up to not dex and just take crazy damage. Domino's defender has just been like a fine wine, aged well over time. She's one of the greatest champs ever made. Degen damage is nice. All you need to do is trigger that special too. He's in control of this fight and he probably feels the same. He still lost almost 40% of health at this point. Now he needs to bait one more special too, which he does, and then finish it off. But if this was the Loki, the fight would have ended like 30 seconds ago. But with this Domino, he's playing well. He's going to win this. And that fight still took... Oh. Over a minute? So... I know this is a longer than normal video. Ironically, Koala Ben was telling me I shouldn't be afraid to post him. This needs to be talked about. I'm not worried about myself. I'm not worried about Ben. I'm not worried about most in-game players. They either don't do the arena or their rosters are sick. But everybody else that depends on this, especially free-to-play players who don't have great rosters to begin with, you're just, it's much harder for you to get free units. And I think Kabam wants to burn you out. Kabam wants to drain your soul and have you quit. Because if you aren't spending in this game, you have no value to them uh, at Kabam anymore. Kabam Jack said it. I am not being a clickbait cracker, as some people would say. Anytime you make any kind of uh, stance against Kabam, people are like, oh my gosh, that's awful. Uh, is it? Because I'm just looking at data. If the data showed nothing but this, I'd talk about that. But it doesn't. And that's going to con conclude this video today. Thanks for watching. Have a good one.